Welcome to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where we feature top leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry with your host, Drew Hendricks. Now, let's get started with the show. Drew Hendricks here. I'm the host of the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where I talk with leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry. From the CEO of Innovent, whose technology helps wineries run at optimum efficiency, to today's guest, Mark Hansen, the Sonoma County Winery Brickler is designed to bring guests into a full experience beyond just the bottle of wine. Today's episode is sponsored by Barrels Ahead. At Barrels Ahead, we work with you to implement a one-of-a-kind marketing strategy, one that highlights your authenticity, tells your story, and connects you with your ideal customers. Mark, in short, we help wineries unlock their story to unleash their revenue. Go to BarrelsAhead.com today to learn more. I want to give a big thank you to Paul Salcedo at Bottle Van for introducing me to today's guest. Go to BottleVan.com to learn more about how their technology helps wineries engage with consumers. I'm super excited to talk with today's guest, Mark Hansen, co-founder of Bricoler Vineyards. Mark was born in Santa Rosa and grew up in Marin County. He then spent 30 years in the software industry before purchasing a Russian River Valley vineyard. At the time, the grapes were being sold to other wineries. But in 2017, Mark started Bricoler Vineyards along with his wife, Beth, and daughter, Sarah Citron. Today, we're going to learn a little bit more about Bricoler's unique story. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, Drew. Welcome to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you. So, Mark, tell, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the wine industry. Well, you know, if you had told me 30 years ago, I, my wife and daughter and I would own a, a winery, I probably would have laughed. But uh, the reality is we spent uh, many, many years in Sonoma County, and we're very fond of Sonoma County. My wife's great-great-grandfather was Pietro Carlo Rossi, who made wine for Italian and Swiss colony in Osti in the late 1800s. And so he was one of the pivotal figures in Sonoma County and growing and uh, producing Zinfandel, as well as um, putting California in the map. And so as a child, uh, my wife uh, came to Sonoma County a lot. Her father had grown up working in the vineyards and uh, in 1959 bought a place in Cloverdale, just north of Santa Rosa. And literally from the time she was four years old through college, she lived every year in the summer in uh, Cloverdale in Sonoma County and it was near and dear to her heart. And she was one of six kids. All the six kids uh, had their first jobs and uh, swimming lessons and everything in, the, in, in Cloverdale in Sonoma County. And they didn't even realize San Francisco was foggy in the summer. And then as we got married and raised our kids over the last uh, 30 plus years, we brought our kids to Sonoma County all the time. And we joked around about having a little place in a vineyard after our kids had gone from college and retiring and when our kids got out of college, we started looking around and realized that we didn't know how to or, or want to retire. And we ended up buying a vineyard, which we're pretty excited about in the Rush River Valley here in Windsor, California. Oh, that's amazing. Well, that's a great story. So what were there any challenges when it came to buying that vineyard and setting up the winery? Oh, well, lots of challenges, uh, you know, and more and more challenges even since we bought the winery. So <laughs> when we uh, started to look for properties, we were looking for properties really a little further north in uh, Hillsburg or Austria or Cloverdale, near where the family property had been. And as we kept looking, we branched out our search. And when we found the property here on Star Road in Windsor, which is between Santa Rosa and Hillsburg, we really fell in love with it right away. It had amazing Russian River fruit, uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, 21 acres of uh, grapes, uh, planted with two different varieties of Chardonnay and uh, five different varieties of Pinot Noir. They were selling the grapes to Paul Hobbs and Sam Lando, Lando Vineyards, Patson Hall, Lewis Sellers, a number of name, amazing wineries. Mm -hmm. And so we knew the grapes were awesome. And what we loved about the property is there were um, four or five areas in the property out in the middle of the country 
that made it seem like that you could gather as a group and kind of have your own private venue. And we always imagine that if people came to Sonoma County wine tasting or enjoying food and wine, which is really our specialty, they'd want to see the beauty of Sonoma County. And this place really is representative of the beauty of Sonoma County on the country. Yeah, it's that whole experience that's so important beyond just just the bottle. Not not I mean the wine itself is the is the star, but there's that whole supporting cask of being on the on your property. And you've got a full farm and you actually have a um you've got a you've got a full um you have a farm there as well, don't you? We uh have really a, an amazing array of um uh activities or businesses. Mm -hmm. We have um, 32 raised uh, beds with vegetable gardens where we grow vegetables, which we use in our kitchen every day for our, our, some people would say farm to table. I like to say plant to plate um, Mm -hmm. wine tasting experiences or our wine pairing dinners. We also have planted 260 olive trees where we do olive oil, where we've done four vintages of olive oil. Uh, we've planted a number of fruit trees, uh, apple trees, pear trees, persimmon, pomegranate, fig, uh, peach and nectarine and, and others. And we utilize the fruits and vegetables, you know, um, as part of our wine and food pairings every day. That's amazing. So as, as the customers come up and visit your winery, they're, they're, in, they, they're immersed in a full biodiverse experience that just enhances that wine. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. You know, um, you know, I think wine tasting in the Russian River Valley or in Sonoma County is amazing. You know, there's some amazing vineyards, obviously fabulous wines. Um, you know, to me, wine tasting has always been special. Uh, I have a, and my wife and daughter love food also. So we love to go to some of the Sonoma County's amazing restaurants in Hillsburg, Sonoma County, the town of Sonoma, uh, et cetera. But, you know, the magic is when food is paired with wine and, you know, the chef can bring out the amazing flavors in the food and wine and take it to another level. So we really um, have um, strove and, and, and continue to strive at our property to provide an elevated food and wine experience, doing very unique pairings from the garden and from local Sonoma County farms where our chefs who were at for seven years at Chalkboard and Brass Rabbit in Hillsburg, amazing restaurants, and they joined us uh, in 2020, you know, do you very unique four course or six course food wine pairings as our tastings every day. And it really is a unique experience, which customers tell us all the time. I, I can imagine and it, it's so important to taste wine in its element and in, with, with the food that it's intended to be consumed with. How much of the um, produce comes from your property into these tasting experiences? I would say it varies dramatically on the time of year. Mm. Um, in the summer and the fall, we try and have about 80% of the, our sip and savor or our roots, uh, which is our four course or six course wine food pairing come from, directly from the gardens. So we talk about it being plant to plate or farm mm-hmm. to table. Um, our, in, the, in the spring and in the winter, it's a little less than that. We actually, this last year in tw- the beginning of 2020, um, built a greenhouse around a number of our um, raised uh, bed vegetable gardens so we can get more produce year round, which our farmer, which we joke around, his name's Farmer Mikey, um, is a full-time uh, farmer and gardener. And, you know, he works with a chef to really do pairings all the time. Well, that's amazing. So over the, over the past year, we've all been, you know, we've all been stuck in COVID time. We're kind of mer- merging. What, what, what actions have you guys taken over the past year to keep the winery open and to keep visitors, you know, safe and secure? Well, we, we probably have had more interesting times than most wineries in that Uh, We launched our wine brand in 2017, and in 2019, we started doing tastings on the property for the first time, all outdoors, because our winery barn was not open. And the grand opening of our winery barn was scheduled for May of 2020. Oh, no. And so we, we received 
you know, uh, clearance from the county building department in uh, March of 2020 to open our facility. And then, you know, the world changed. Uh, we hired our chefs from the chalkboard and brass rabbit. They changed their, they, they trained their replacements for six weeks. They joined us, believe it or not, March 15th, 2020. Oh, and March 18th, everything shut down. So we said, you know, my wife, my daughter and I, we said, oh, geez, what are we going to do? We fired these two amazing chefs. Uh, you know, a Chef Shane had a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. And we're like, we can't lay these people off. That, that's just not fair. So we started doing takeout food and wine bundles. We started um, a virtual cooking show, which early on we called Quarantine Kitchen, hmm. which here we are over a year later, it's still going. It's now called In the Kitchen, where once a week you go on our website, you download the ingredients, you uh, go shopping, and you can cook live with the chef. And I would say on a weekly basis, we have anywhere between 50 and 150 people cooking live on Zoom you know, um, uh, interacting with a chef, asking them questions on, you know, cooking techniques or replacements or food allergies or, you know, just just various techniques. And it's, and it's really turned into a show that we never imagined. It's a lot of fun, a lot of energy. Uh, it's people all over the country. And, um, you know, it, it's developed into a following, which, which if we never had COVID, it never would have happened. What a what an awesome idea and, you know, a great product from a terrible, from a, you know, a very difficult time to pivot and actually do those virtual tastings. They've been huge, but that, I think yours is the first that I've seen as a, a routine in the kitchen type experience. How can, um, how can consumers or how can people take part in this? Do they have to be wine club members or? No, uh, the amazing thing is completely free. So you can go on our website, www.breeklervineyards.com and, uh, you know, download the ingredients, go shopping. Uh, we recommend one of our wines. You could buy one of our wines. You could drink what you have in the cellar. If you don't have our wines, uh, you know, the truth is some people drink water, some people drink beer, some drink vodka, some drink wine. Um, we would love for people to buy our wine and we encourage it. But, you know, the, the, the key is interacting with the consumers and getting them aware of our brand and our our cooking program and our wines and, and you know, getting to follow us long term. Well, that's amazing. What a, what a great way to engage people and just bring them into that full experience. You got I see a, you've got a little selection of wines there in front of you. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. When we bought our Russian River Vineyard uh, about seven years ago, we really made four wines uh, initially. Our rosé of uh, Pinot Noir, which is from our property. Our Russian River Chardonnay, which is from our property. Our, um, our Russian River Pinot from our property. And then we made an Old Vine Zinfandel. Um, which is from Alexander Valley, and it's the only one of our wines that you see out here, other than our bubbly, which I'll talk about in a minute, that my uh, wife's great-grandfather was Pietro Carlo Rossi, who made uh, Zinfandel in uh, early or late 1800s, and so we wanted to do a Zinfandel in tribute to him. All the other three wines um, are in uh, off our Rush River property from our estate grapes and, uh, you know, make them incredible wine. So in 2017, when actually 2016, when we decided to make wine, we had been selling the grapes exclusively before then, we hired Carrie Gott, who you may or may not have heard of, but I know you've heard of Joel Gott Wines. Mm -hmm. Joel Gott Wines, or Joel Gott is uh, Carrie's son. And Carrie is a fifth or fourth generation winemaker. Carrie is, or Joel is a fifth. But um, Kerry uh, literally just had his 51st year making wine. Oh, and he's wow. an amazing winemaker. And his retirement job is helping ourselves and four other boutique wineries, um, you know, learn the craft, very hands-on. So he teaches myself and uh, Tom Pearson, our assistant winemaker, and he's just a joy to work with. Um, so in the 2018, since we have more wines in front of, the in front of me on the table, I'll, I'll explain them. In 2018, we bought a second vineyard called Kick Ranch Vineyard, oh. which is in the Fountain Grove AVA, which is in Santa Rosa. Um, if people that know Santa Rosa, it's in the back 
Eastern Hills of Santa Rosa, right next to Calistoga Road. As you're about to go over the hill to Calistoga, it's the last back vineyard on the Mayacama Mountains or the backside of Pride Mountain before you go over the hill. And so we bought that vineyard, which was a 40 acre vineyard in uh, 2018. And they have been producing amazing wines from 12 different wineries. And we still sell to all 12 of those wineries. But we decided to make a uh, rosé of Grenache, mm. a Sauvignon Blanc, a Viognier, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And um, what you don't see on the, the table in front of me is a Syrah and Petite Syrah, which in 2019 we made, which all come from Kick Ranch. So all of the wines in front of you um, are from one of our two vineyards. So they're all estate grown, which is very unique for a small winery, except for our Zinfandel and our Bubbly. And our Bubbly, which is flying by the seat of our pants, and I'll talk about how we got that definition, maybe if you'll let me in a minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, really came from the barn I'm sitting in is a about a 8,000 square foot old horse barn that we completely renovated to do events. And it's our tasting room and event center. And, you know, when you're doing events, whether they be charity events or corporate events or family events, obviously celebrating life's moments are real important. And bubbly, you know, uh, is critical. So we work with, um, uh, we work with Rack and Riddle in Healdsburg, which is one of the top producers of bubbly in the United States. And Gary got, work with them to kind of customize our bubbly slightly. And we made a North Coast brute, which uh, is called Flying by the Seat of Our Pants. And it's an amazing um, bubbly that uh, actually won a double gold 96. So it's a, it's amazing bubbly that uh, Rob Report uh, last year said it was one of the top team, 17 bubblies to drink for New Year's. And, you know, we've got a lot of recognition. It's a lot of fun. Oh, congrats on that. Thank you. So Flying by the seat of the pants. T tell me about that name. And I think there's a little bit of a story behind that. There is. So let's talk about the name of our winery, which is Brickler Vineyards. And a lot of people said, you know, is your last name Brickler? You know, how did you come up with that name? And the truth is, um, you know, finding a name of a, a winery or a startup is really hard nowadays. There's a lot of names taken. We had another name where we had uh, the, we had the, literally the website, the Instagram, the Facebook. We thought we were ready to print labels. And then we realized we had a trademark problem. And so we said, we better not do this. And my wife and daughter were joking around. And then my daughter and her husband were reading a dictionary of hard to translate words. I don't know why they were doing that. You know, it seems funny. And they just started laughing. And I said, what's so funny? And they said, we found the name of your winery. And I said, what is it? They said, Brickler. And I said, why do I want a French name for a California winery that no one can pronounce and no one knows what it means? And they said, because the definition, you know, fits you perfectly and it's really funny. And I said, okay, let's read it. And it's literally on the back of all of our bottles. And it's one who starts building something without a clear plan cobbling together a whole piece by piece while flying by the seat of their pants. And, you know, I laughed and I thought it was really funny. And, and then I looked at my daughter and her husband and I said, you're saying mom and dad don't have a clear plan. You know, that's kind of harsh. What's, what's, what's going on? And they said, okay, you have a plan, you have a vision, but it's always changing. And, you know, every six months there's a new dimension. And I said, that's the story of life or the story of business. You know, that, that's just kind of the way things are. And so what's funny is I mentioned that um, the first year we made wine in 2007, we made this Rosé of Pinot Noir, which is amazing. It literally, the first year, got a gold medal and uh, uh, it was rated uh, 90 point wine. And the second year we produced wine, we decided to make a Rosé of Grenache. Additionally, because uh, my daughter loved, and my wife, loved Grenache. And my wife, I really love the rosé of Grenache from Provence. And most of that is um, rosé of Grenache wine. And so we had Grenache at Kick Ranch. So we said the second wine, and my daughter said, how do we use the jumbled Brickler logo 
you know, with a, a second rosé. And we decided, let's play off the definition and use flying by the seat of our pants. So we bottled it, really fun. And the first thing my wife said is, you should trademark that. And I said, you can't trademark flying by the seat of our pants in a wine bottle. She goes, how do you know? You know, you should try. And we tried and we were able to. And uh, so now we've come out with the, obviously the bubbly, um, flying by the seat of our pants, which is really fun. Um, actually in 2020, we're coming out with a second Sauvignon Blanc. that will be flying by the seat of our pants. And um, later this year, we'll have a red blend, which is flying by the seat of our pants, kind of in tribute to my father-in-law who loved red blends and his, his name was CA. So we'll have four wines using the flying by the seat of our pants logo or label. And that will be our distribution or, or wine shop or restaurant wine. Mm. Cause you know, you think of the label, it's catchy, but mm -hmm. imagine if we had designed it for COVID and what we're all going through, you know, it's even more catchy today because every human being on this earth is flying by the seat of our pants the last 12 months. No matter what your plans are, you're doing something different. So it just kind of has a way to resonate with, you know, everyone in the world. That's, that's very good. And you, and you did fly by the seat of your pants, like inventing the, or doing the wine tastings and then doing those recipe tours and then figuring out how to reposition your winery the day COVID opened and keep it open. But today, today the winery is open and people can get reservations and have a tasting experience. Is that correct? That is correct. We have been open, um, you know, most of 2020 when things reopen in kind of the, uh, you know, late winter, early spring, we've been at, for open for outdoor only food and wine experiences, which we have an amazing property for outdoor food and wine experiences. But, um, you know, for the last, uh, I'll say month, we're open indoor or outdoor, depending on what guests want. So we let guests choose. It still is completely social distance, you know, very safe environment where you wear your mask, you come with a reservation only, you have a table of two, four, six, or eight, depending what you're comfortable with, you're inside, outside, depending on what you're comfortable with. But once you sit down in your, I'll call it private, you know, wine and food experience, you're able to take off your mask, enjoy, you know, the company at your table, enjoy the beauty of Sonoma County and just, uh, you know, try and enjoy an amazing food wine experience here at Breakwater Vineyards. Well, that's great. I've been <clears throat> I've been talking with a few other wineries and winery owners about how just in the past, you know, month or two since California started reopening, there's just been a big um, surge up to the wine country for people wanting to get out and experience life again. Have you seen that big increase? Absolutely. You know, we're, um, you know, we're only in our second year of tasting room operations. Mm -hmm. So we're growing immensely. You know, I would say this last weekend, we had about 200 guests uh, over the weekend, which sounds like a lot, but really on our property, it's, it's very spread out. So people feel completely safe. But what's interesting is, you know, over the last six months, it's been mostly you know, um, Bay Area people coming up to wine country that want to experience something new. They're just happy to get out of the house. They want to go enjoy each other and enjoy an outdoor, you know, food, wine experience. But I would say over the last month, we begin to see tourism again. So this last weekend, we had a group of uh, actually two groups, uh, you know, one of 12 and one of 14 from Georgia. And it was a tour group that was from North Carolina, Florida, and Georgia. 100% of the people have had their vaccinations. You know, they're just ready to go. And one thing we're really excited by is Sonoma County has been really good to the wineries and wine growers. And so we have 17 employees and 100% of us have had both vaccinations. So it just feels like a safe environment. And more and more people are coming out every day. Oh, that's great. As you're, as you're growing, so talk about your winery for a minute and how you actually bootstrap that up from, you know, a vineyard to a full winery. What were some of the, um, th what were some of the criteria that you used when you were picking some of the suppliers to, to supply your bottles, your corks, your, the different vineyard tools and winery operations equipment? Well, you know, one fabulous benefit of having someone like Kerry Goddard as a winemaker 
is he has relationships with bottle suppliers, mm. court suppliers, capsule suppliers, label designers. And, you know, he says, you know, literally through all my years, here are the three or four people to call. You figure out how to use, but, you know, don't, 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 you know, go crazy and call a lot of people. These are just very reliable suppliers. So one of the benefits of having a wine, a winemaker that's been making wine for 51 years is he has amazing relationships and just kind of shortcuts the process. You know, I, I would say one of the neat things, and, and you, you gave tribute to them early on, is we did an early partnership with Bottlebin. And I'm from the software world. And, you know, I, I believe in technology. And one of the people that I work with literally in the 1980s um, is on the board of uh, Bottlebin. And he introduced me to this concept of, uh, you know, on the back of the bottle, uh, I should I should zoom the camera in, but we have a little uh, logo, which says bottle bin. And you can scan your, literally scan your cell phone. There's an app on here called bottle bin. And you just scan the label. And literally what comes up is the description of the wine, a little bit about the winemaker, a little bit about tasting notes, a little bit about information. You may be familiar with apps like Bambino. It's similar to that, but it's actually much more in depth. And so we thought being an early supplier, we do some unique things. So we are trying to leverage bottle bin and unique technology to kind of set us apart. That's great. That just helps. That just helps your clients and people appreciate Brickle or more because you're able to open up that experience to them, even when they're in their store and they may not understand everything about that label. They can they can experience the full winery even before they purchase or while they're drinking it at their dinner table. You know, I would love to think that everyone could always come to the winery to pick up their wine or buy the wine, but you know, especially in COVID times, you know, that's not possible. So we have about a thousand wine club members in our winery, which is amazing for how young we are. And they're all over the country. So if you get your wine shipment in New York or Georgia or North Carolina or Louisiana or wherever, Chicago, wherever it might be, you know, to be able to scan the back of the bottle and hear firsthand on a video or a read, you know, from the winemaker, a little bit about the winery, a little bit about the wine, a little bit about how it was made, you know, just adds that personal touch in a different way for someone that can't come, you know, to the winery every day. That, that is awesome. That is awesome. So the, I do want to concentrate though, again, on this sip and savor experience. Now I was looking at this because a little bit of a backstory. My wife and I were heading up to the Rogue River to go river rafting in Memorial Day. And I was planning all my tasting experiences. And this was before I actually talked with Paul and learned about you. Or I'm always looking for an experience when I go to a winery. Like I've I've been through many, many tastings, but I like to see the food and the and the wine. And like what sets your sip and savor experience apart? I know we talked about it a little bit. Well, you know, what, what really is unique about the sip and saver is, first of all, it's six wines and six bites. So it's three courses of two um, appetizer, you know, uh, size um, dishes with two wines at a time. And so you're you're going, and I, and, I, and I won't get into the exact details of the sip and saver because every um, six weeks or every two months, it rotates. So it's always different. And so one of the beauties is if you come for a six course food wine pairing, you know, in May, when you come back in, you know, July or August, it's completely different. And, but what's great about it is the chefs make very unique combinations of um, appetizer style dishes with the wines. So you might start with a, a rosé, you know, paired with a dish. And, uh, you know, one of the really unique things is our Viognier, for example, a lot of people haven't had Viognier. Our Viognier, Viognier is from Kick Ranch, and our Viognier is a very dry wine with amazing uh, floral cape characteristics. And most people think of Viognier as sweet, but it pairs amazing with spicy foods. Mm. And so we'll generally have a spicy dish for that. Um, our um, our Estate Chardonnay is a traditional Russian River buttery oaky Chardonnay. So the chef recently is pairing a pasta dish 
with that has buttery characteristics with this uh, buttery oaky Chardonnay. Uh, we'll do um, something unique with our Zinfandel, for example. We've done everything from a, a dark chocolate dessert with Zinfandel, where a lot of people don't think of Zinfandel paired with chocolate, which is amazing. Or, um, you know, a spicy uh, barbecued, uh, almost Indian spice a zucchini dish with a, mm. with a Zinfandel. So he's doing very unique pairings that you wouldn't think about as traditional pairings, kind of trying to get your taste buds going and matching that food and wine. And, and what I like to see is people's faces because they go to wineries. A lot of them have, you know, amazing cheese boards or amazing uh, meats. And they pair these, you know, meat and cheese boards with wine but this is way beyond that. This is literally stuff out of the garden or stuff from local farms and, 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 you know, fine dining uh, appetizer portions paired with food and wine. Perfect. And it gives you the chance to just actually savor it and actually experience the wine versus kind of going from glass to glass. And then the next winery you can actually experience the land. Exactly. What, we, what we encourage is people to try the wine, try the food, then try it again. And usually the flavors, once you've had the food and wine, are completely different. You know, I would say it used to be people went to four or five wineries in a day and, you know, do a big tasting. Our typical experience now is two to three hours, sometimes even four hours. Well, people will do a sip and savor. Then maybe they'll get a, a wood burning pizza from the oven, they'll grab a bottle of wine, go walk around the property, just kind of hang out and enjoy the beauty of Sonoma County. Man, that sounds amazing. Where can people find more about this experience? So the, the best place is our website. So if they go to www.bricolervineyards.com, that's B-R-I-C-O-L-E-U-R, vineyards, V-I-N-E-Y-A-R-D-S.com. That's the best place. Uh, my daughter and Isabella do an amazing job on Instagram. So you can always go to Instagram and go to bricolervineyards.com or Facebook. And there's a lot of information on all the above. Well, that's great information. Mark, is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we wrap it up today? You know, Drew, I greatly appreciate the ability to share what we're doing here at Brickler. The biggest thing I could share is I encourage everyone to come out and have an amazing food wine experience. Our, our roots, which is four wines and four bites or sip and savor, are really the unique um, thing we offer. And I encourage everyone to come out and try it you know, come out, enjoy our 95 different roses at Rose Garden, which is near our two bocce ball courts, or come stroll around our big pond where we have stock with bass and bluegill and have a lot of trellises and you can just hang out and pick and benches or wander up to our stone pavilion, which overlooks our Chardonnay block. So we, we, we encourage families, we encourage dogs, you know, we're, we're really a, a dog friendly, fr family friendly environment. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. And thank you for having me on the show. Thank you so Mark. Th thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for being on the show. Okay. Well, you have a good day and take care. You too. Thanks for listening to the legends behind the craft podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.